A lot, a lot of acres voted for him, but not, <laughs> not enough people is right. what it boils down to. Right. So. Moving on, um, in the next race, we had the Secretary of State, uh, which was not surprising on the Democratic side, Heather French Henry, former Miss yeah. America, uh, wife of uh, former Lieutenant Governor Steve Henry, who probably was one of the more well-known individuals running, period, in this mm -hmm. election cycle. Yeah. Easily won. 70% of the vote. 70% of the vote, yeah. her uh, primary for Secretary of State. On the Republican side, however, Michael Adams, who I think was, by a lot of people's measurements, considered the favorite, he's going to be the mm -hmm. Republican. Interesting right. to me that the very first thing Michael Adams does after he gets the nomination for Secretary of State on the Republican side, he immediately tries to attach Allison London and Grimes, the current Secretary of State, who's term limited, right. to Heather French Henry. That's because, obviously, because of her controversies and things going on, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's well, the exactly. reason. Ex exactly. And, and you know, Bevin came out, I think, last night, and he slammed Hillary Clinton in his, uh, right. in his comment. So, so yeah, what they're, wh what they're doing, the, it's, the, it's the old script. You go out, you, you try to attach as much baggage to the candidates as you can, your opponents as you can, especially if they don't have any of their own baggage. And I, and I don't know that, uh, that Heather French Hen Henry has any of her, her own, but Allison certainly does. I can imagine that you're going to see some attacks on Steve Henry. At some oh, point. the governor, that's the very first thing the mm -hmm. governor mentioned in his press conference. He was very complimentary of Heather French Henry. Mm -hmm. I mean, complimentary, because, you know, she was, of course, former Commissioner of Veterans Affairs right. in the state, so technically she worked for him in the administration mm -hmm. for a short period. But the first thing he did was pivot to her, her husband. Right. I wonder how women voters are going to think of that, though. Like, the idea of we're going to judge this woman running for Secretary of State on her husband's misdeeds, her husband's controversy, right. and, not, and not hers. Right. What's interesting to me, too, Joe, in that Secretary of State race, uh, Heather French Henry got a total number of 263,000 some odd votes. Yes. Michael Adams got about 94,000. Is it, is it considered she's the favorite in the general early at this point? I, you know, I, it's, I think it's hard to, hard to tell. You, you know, when you look at those numbers, you, you see that the Republicans, fewer Republicans voted, mm -hmm. and then you also had a few candidates there in the Secretary of State's race for the Republicans who, who ran aggressive campaigns. And right. you didn't really have that on the Democratic side. So so she was she was going to win from the, the, the get-go. She had the name recognition. The other side, you had a real race going on. And right. so, so will these Republicans come home? Yeah, probably so. But at the same time, she was very popular among veterans and conservative veterans. Yep. Uh, for, for her time uh, working for the state of Kentucky under Bashir, and then, like you said, for the, a short period of time working uh, in the in the Bevin administration. So, so that has got to be a plus. And you know, I'd say that she might be the most likely Democrat to win in November. Right. Attorney General on the Republican mm -hmm. side, uh, it was Daniel Cameron, a lawyer out of Louisville, versus yes. State Senator Will Schroeder of Wilder. Um, Mr. Cameron, of course, is not just some old lawyer, just regular lawyer from Louisville. Mm -hmm. He happens to be the former general counsel of U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, mm -hmm. which was probably a distinct advantage for him going into this race. Right. He ended up defeating uh, Senator Schroeder uh, 55 to 44 percent. The race really wasn't about issues. The two of them pretty much agreed on everything. Yeah. It became more of this sort of nasty back and forth with Cameron saying, aha, well, Schroeder, you were a Democrat 10 years ago or so in uh -huh. 2008. So if you're a Democrat in 2008, Senator, did you vote for Barack Obama or did you vote for Hillary Clinton? Senator Schroeder never answered that question when I asked him it, right. but it seemed that that did hurt him uh, in, in this Republican primary. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it did. And, you know, this, uh, McConnell has long tentacles out in the state. Uh, the right. fact that he was backing him and, and fairly actively backing him, I, I, I think certainly played a role here. And it, uh, it, what's, what's interesting to me is that McConnell was able to push his candidate uh, through in this situation. At the same time, Matt Bevin is 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 struggling to get above fifty percent of the vote. Right, and so it, it kind of shows where the power is in the party to some degree. It's still Mitch's and party, basically. It's still Mitch's party, and it I think it, it also <coughs> it, it makes it less likely that we're going to see Bevin go after McConnell in mm. two thousand twenty. Right, and for me, I wonder. It looks like. Republicans care more about the attorney general's race than any other race statewide. I mean, the, the party faithful folks, the, the party officials, they really want the attorney general's spot, feeling that Andy Bashir um, used that office to sort of vex the, the Bevin administration. On the Democratic side, former House Speaker, former attorney general, Greg Stumbo ran unopposed. Right. So he was the nominee as soon as he signed his paperwork. And, and you have to also go back to, to, to understand how important that office is for the Republicans. You have to go back to uh, Governor Ernie Fletcher, right. the Republican, who faced a Greg Stumbo when he was uh, 
Attorney, Attorney General the first time around, and Stumbo is largely given given credit for having taken down Ernie Fletcher with the uh, Blackberry scan. Jam. Yep. Uh, yep. Scan. So. It's, it seems to me then, Joe, the dynamic in the Attorney General's race for Republicans is going to be old guard versus new guard, mm -hmm. right? Daniel Cameron never run for office right. before. There's a little bit of history. He would be the first African American Attorney General mm -hmm. if elected. Um, and I believe, is he not the first Republican, African-American to be, well, is he the first person to be nominated in Kentucky by a major party on his own? It, from my research so far, he, he seems to be like, I'm yeah. going back pretty far in, yeah. into the records. I believe Daniel Cameron might be the first African-American period who's been a nominee for statewide office nominated on, by a major party. Uh, on his own. On his own, right. Yeah. Janine Hampton as lieutenant governor, first African-American statewide official period. Right. Uh, she's running under the ticket of, of Governor Bevin. Th right. This is Daniel Cameron all by himself. It's just yep. his face out there. Yep. I, I do wonder what the dynamic of this race is going to be. For Republicans, it certainly seems to be old guard versus new guard. Mm -hmm. For Stumble, the natural claim would be, do you want Mitch McConnell running the attorney general's office? Right. Right. That, that's, that's one thing. and. He's also going to say, look, if you put Matt Bevin back in, you want a Democrat standing there. And does that and undercut Andy Bashir at all? Like, say, like, basically a stumble out here saying, I don't think Andy Bashir is going to win. I, no, but I'm, you can't, I don't think you can, you can discount the possibility that, that Bevin will win another term. And, and I don't think voters will, will see it that way, if, if he frames it the right way. I mean, right. so. Very quickly, the other races that uh, we saw last night, the Democratic uh, race for auditor, Sherry Donahue ended up winning that race with 46% against Kelsey Coots and Chris Tobe. Mm -hmm. uh, in the treasurer primary, Michael Bowman ended up beating Josh Meyer 66 uh, to 33 percent. Ryan Quarles, the incumbent agriculture commissioner on the Republican side, easily winning uh, his primary. Uh, on the Democratic agriculture commissioner race, you had Robert Conway beating Joe Trigg 60 percent to, to 40 percent, 39 percent, excuse me. Um, Republicans seem to be very eager and believe that they can sweep the state riot offices. They've already taken back the House. Mm -hmm. They have a supermajority in the Senate already. What do you think, Joe? I mean, is that the chance I, of a Republican to be able to take all seven, all six constitutional offices? You know, there, there, there's always that possibility. I mean, they, they came uh, fairly close to doing it the last time right. out. Now the problem that they have is that, uh, that uh, Governor Bevin is going to be somewhat of a drag on the ticket. Um, whether he wins or not, he he is going to cause some people to, to think about what they're doing. Um, also, you got Heather French Henry, who has a very well-known name, and she is uh, again, like I said, very well liked among the conservative veterans that she's worked with. Uh, so, I I have to think that uh, that she may be a, a bit of a stopgap there for them, even if Republicans sweep the rest of the offices. Right. Um, but there is, a, there is a chance of doing that. Right. Well, thank you for joining us. Again, I'm Philip M. Bailey, political writer here at the Courier Journal. You can see all of our coverage either in your local newspaper or at CourierJournal.com here with columnist Joe Girth. 